Hey there, and welcome back to another video from Open Learn Sec. My name is Jono, and I'm learning about cybersecurity and documenting the process in the open in the hopes that it'll help others who are on the same path as me. So today, let's talk about Nmap. It is, hands down, one of the most common tools in the toolbox of every attacker and defender, as well as network and system administrators, and generally anyone who looks after infrastructure. It's been in continual development since 1997, maintained and enhanced by one of the OGs of the security scene, Fjordor, along with many contributors over the years. We love it and it'll always be one of the most versatile bits of tech. That said, it has a dizzying array of options and command line syntax that I just cannot always bin pack into my brain. So I end up constantly using cheat sheets while I continue to build the muscle memory for Nmap. So I decided let's investigate some other tools as an alternative to Nmap. First on our list is Rust Scan. So it's billed as a modern port scanner that is fast, like super fast. Their GitHub page claims when running at top speed, Rust Scan can enumerate all 65,635 ports in three seconds which is crazy. If you've ever scanned all ports on a single host using Nmap, you'll know that this is at least gonna take a few minutes. So let's try it out. I'm in my Kali desktop here, and unfortunately the make process uh, for installing Rust, Rust Scan is a little tricky. It's not in either the Debian or the Kali package, package repository yet. So we can't simply do apt install Rust Scan. It's just not gonna work. So let's go back to the GitHub repo and see how, what our options are. So if we head to the release page, the latest version 2.1.1 has source code, which you can build yourself. But if we go back to 2.01, we can see that there's a Debian package. So it doesn't look like the Debian package is always up to date with the latest build. This is okay. Let's find the installation guide. And the installation guide says, you need Nmap. Well, that's curious. Okay, let's come back to it. It says that Docker is the recommended way of installing Rust Scan because it raises the open file descriptor limit, which means you don't have to change this in your operating system. Okay, that makes sense. Works on all systems. Yep, Docker is great for that. And that the Docker image is always using the latest build. Okay. Uh, by default, Kali doesn't have Docker installed, but I'm happy to do so because I'm, I use Docker quite a bit. So let's jump into the shell. First step is to install Docker itself. So that's sudo apt install docker.io minus y. Now, I already have Docker installed because I've been testing it out earlier, but this will take a few minutes for you. Let's go back to the docs and see what's next. Okay, to get started, simply run this command. Let's uh, copy that. Go back to our shell, paste it in, uh, remove these placeholders, and run that. So you might get this error. Docker has to be run with ele elevated privileges by default. So I'm just gonna do sudo docker run. Okay, first time we run it, it says that uh, unable to find the image, so it's gonna download it, and hey, look at that, run successfully. It didn't actually do anything because we didn't supply any host for it to scan, etc. cetera. Um, but I didn't really wanna type out this long command line like every time that I wanna use uh, Rust scan. So the solution here is to create a alias in your shell. So if you're not familiar with aliases, I suggest you read up on it as it can really boost your productivity. So for this uh, particular shell, I'm going to edit the bash aliases file. So that's home directory dot bash aliases. And I'm going to add an alias command. So alias rust scan. So that's the command that we'll be using. And then what the actual expanded command that is that we want to run. So it's sudo docker run minus it minus minus rm minus minus name rust scan 
and then the name of the Docker repository, which is Rust scan slash Rust scan. And instead of speci specifying the version number, I'm going to change that 2.1.1 to this, which is a tag telling it, telling Docker to always fetch the latest version of the build. So effectively now my Rust scan command will automatically update if there's a new version available. Cool. So we save that file and now we run Rust scan, but it doesn't know how to run it. That's because the alias doesn't become uh, activated or available until you log out and log or until you log out of your shell and launch a new shell. So it rereads this bash aliases file, but we can shortcut that. Um, this is a good little shell trick. So we can do short uh, source home directory bash aliases. Boom. Now let's try Rust scan. Hey, look at that. It's working. Okay, let's give it a go. I have a separate VM running, which we're going to use as the scan target. So Rust, Rust scan minus A192.168.1.250. This is just my demo machine. And cool, it looks like it's up and running. It really quickly found the uh, three ports that are open on this machine. Uh, but what's this? It looks like nmap output. So reading up on the documentation, it seems that Rust scan will do the port enumeration and then anything it finds, it'll pass to nmap for the actual service discovery. Cool. So it's not a complete replacement. Looking at the uh, syntax for how Rust scan works, we can see that, let's just put it in the shell here. Minus help. We can see that the nmap is invoked using this argument slash command. So if we wanted to pass our own arguments to nmap, we would put it in the Rust command itself. So it would be Rust scan and our target. And then if we go back to the syntax, we have this double tack or double minus, and then this is the command that it runs for each host that is discovered. So tack tack and then minus a. So that effectively would then run an nmap aggressive scan uh, on each IP and port that is discovered by Rust scan. Very cool. So another couple of important things to highlight is that the makers of Rust scan are clear that Rust scan is not very stealth. Uh, due to the high number of port scans simultaneously. And that you shouldn't use this tool against sensitive servers. It says it down here. So this is really good to know. Um, one other thing I picked up on, which was a nice design goal of Rust scan, is that it's built with accessibility in mind. So it has extra options to help with those who may use screen readers, etc. cetera. Um, this is a great initiative. Uh, definitely makes uh, these tools sort of more accessible to all members of the security community. The last feature I wanted to mention it, the, is that Rustscan is really flexible with post-scanning actions. So if I search for engine, so you can feed it into nmap with your own options, or you can feed it into its own scripting engine, and that scripting engine supports Python, Lua, and Shell. This is pretty awesome. So the example that they have here is that uh, if Rustscan finds a open SMB port, you can then pipe that to SMB enum and run further discovery on that particular port on that particular host. So personally, the first idea I have for this is I'm gonna write some scripts that output the Rustscan findings um, into Markdown. And that way I can paste the uh, reconnaissance output into my uh, notes editor, which is Obsidian, and I don't have to do any formatting. So that's a really nice feature. Okay, with Rust scan out of the way, let's have a look at Nabu. So scrolling through the GitHub project, it's built in Go. We have all the standard kind of stuff, fast SIM connect UDP port scanning. Uh, it also has in, Nmap integration for service discovery. So I think it's a little bit similar to 
Ruskan in that it's working on the uh, port enumeration and then relying on Nmap for service enumeration or discovery. Format its output in JSON, which is really neat. A bit further, okay, this all looks like pretty standard stuff. Okay, so it looks like Nabu can be passed an ASN to be scanned. That's pretty crazy. So if you're unfamiliar with ASN, it stands for Autonomous System Number. And it's used by the BGP protocol, which is really like a key part of how the internet works. And ASN might have thousands or even millions of individual public IPs associated with it. So I'd just be very cautious with what you're doing in here. Uh, let's get Nabu installed. Nabu, like Ruscan, has a Docker option. Uh, I think we're going to roll with that rather than downloading a pre-compiled binary or installing the Go tooling and package manager, etc. So let's go back to the shell and come up with a Docker syntax for Nabu. So it's going to be something along the lines of this to be very similar to how we run Ruscan. So docker run minus attack it minus minus rm minus minus name Nabu. And then the uh, repository path, which is project discovery slash Nabu, and then we add that latest tag. So we always get the latest stable build. Let's run that. Okay, looks like it worked. Like before, let's add an alias that will let us store that Docker command away. So just as a reminder, we edit the uh, .bash aliases file in our home directory. And then we'll add a new line here, alias Nabu equals sudo docker run tac it tac tac rm tac tac name nabu project discovery slash nabu latest okay so we'll just source the uh, alias file now so we can use it straight away without logging out oops and let's test it out yep cool all right let's give it a go on our uh demo target so nabu minus host 192.168.1.250 and off it goes wow that returned really fast so super impressive um i did suspect this was a little bit too fast um so i went back to the docs and what i found was that by default if you don't specify the port range that you want scanned it's going to use the top 100 ports. So you can do top ports, uh, the default is set to 100, uh, but you can also request the top 1000 ports. And if you're familiar with Nmap top ports, this is uh, pretty much the same. And I believe it's actually the same list of ports that Nmap uses. Really cool. I like the features of both Nabu and Ruscan, so let's wrap it up. Uh, both of these tools claim fast report enumeration, but still rely on Nmap for service discovery. So really their aim is to optimize the start of the reconnaissance chain that would be handled by Nmap, and then provide some extra flexibility with scripting engines, etc. So Nmap you can use for all. Uh, if you were to look at Ruscan, we can see that Ruscan will do host discovery, uh, will do port discovery, but it'll then rely on Nmap for actual service detection. Uh, Nabu is pretty much the same. It's going to do the host and port discovery and then can pass to Nmap for service discovery. Uh, keep in mind, looks like Rus is, Ruscan is a little bit faster, a little bit more flexible in the sense that uh, along with Nmap for service discovery, you can chain together additional actions through the scripting engine. So, are they actually faster than Nmap? Well, my general sense in running a few unscientific tests is that they are faster for uh, port enumeration. But to get a little bit more detailed, um, there's a link in the description that I definitely encourage you to have a look at. And this is a much more scientific and uh, thorough benchmarking process. So Ruscan along with Nabu and Nmap and a fourth tool called Mascan uh, put through a whole bunch of different tests, um, different scan types, uh, different configuration settings and options, turning on fingerprinting, etc. Uh, 
testing against a local host, testing against a remote host, and testing against a whole entire subnet. So I'll leave you to read this on your own. Thanks to Sock Monkey for putting it together. His published guides are absolute gold, and you should definitely spend some time reading them. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for sticking around. I hope this was a useful guide in expanding your recon tool set. Uh, keep in mind, it's easy to get lost in the rabbit hole of security tools, and I encourage you to explore and experiment and find something that suits you best. I'm a new channel, so any like, subscribe, or comment is very much appreciated to help with getting this video out. If you do have any questions, please comment below, and as always, I'll do my best to help you. This has been Jono at Open Loan Sec. All the best, and happy hacking.